The idea for One Penny, uh, it was actually another script that Michael, uh, the co-writer and director, uh, that we, we came up with. Uh, it was set in a different place uh, in the future. Uh, just a total different story. And when we found out that we were going to finance it ourselves, we basically just broke down, um, broke down the script and made it into current times. And it was an underdog story, so we decided that the main character would be homeless. So it's not necessarily a, a movie about homeless people. It's about a, uh, a a movie that about a kid that happens to be homeless. And we wanted to create like a, a, a real cool underdog story, good versus evil. Uh, but then we wanted to also have uh, uh, a another character, which is the professor, um, who who is totally opposite of Dylan and has his own story. Um, kind of like a, a American Beauty, if you were to watch that movie as a kid and watch it as an adult, you have two different perspectives on it. So sure. for our first movie, it had to be Underdog, and uh, it, it had a lot of us in it. Um, the main character and his best friend are you know, two little entrepreneurs trying to get off the streets and just make money, uh, very similar to, to Mike and myself. with us is that we wanted to highlight where we're from. So it was going to be the D.C. metro area, so that included uh, uh, obviously D.C. and uh, parts of Maryland. So a lot of the other scenes were probably shot in Maryland. Um, and our, uh, another thing was we wanted a bunch of locations. We felt that being in the, uh, sometimes you just can't afford uh, to go and shoot everywhere, but we try to use or utilize all our contacts to shoot everywhere. So, um, as far as uh, as far as those locations that maybe you're talking about, um, we there was a developer that was uh, was in control of a old hospital in Fort Howard, uh, Maryland. And what he did was it was like it was a total blessing. But he this hospital is kind of old school where. Um, the houses uh, of the doctors are right next to the hospital. And it was completely abandoned because he's uh, developing it for mixed use uh, renovations. And we were able to not only use the interiors of the hospitals, but also the interior, exterior of all the houses. Uh, he gave us an acre of land so we can build uh, what is called Shepherd's Cove, the tent community. And we just hung out there for three months. And he was totally cool with it. So that was a big, a, a big location there, and just various parts of, of Baltimore, D.C., Gaithersburg, Maryland, uh, Wheaton, Maryland, Silver Spring. Uh, we were just all over the place. Cool, cool. Now, I know you, you were just mentioning that, you know, you're all about uh, trying to promote, the, like, the D.C. metropolitan area and what it has to offer, whether it's, you know, where you're shooting or, you know, where, um, you know, the other facets of the film. So can you talk a bit about uh, the casting process, were um, the actors that you had who were, you know, quite impressive, you know, were you able to um, pull, pull any, uh, any of them from the area or was most of them, you know, from outside of the D.C. Uh, metropolitan area? Right. Uh, and again, with, with the locations, kind of the same thing were, was for the actors. We did do a um, local casting call where I would say half of the actors were actually from the area. Uh, most of the mains, however, were from New York. We did a major casting call out there, uh, particularly because there are a lot of professional actors out there that are willing to take a month off their schedule to come down and, and shoot. A lot of the people here, because, uh, in, in my opinion, it's because maybe there are not enough productions here to keep someone busy full time. Sure. Uh, a lot of a lot of local people weren't here, weren't able to commit to the demands of the schedule. So what we did was we casted those people that we were very interested in, gave them smaller roles that they were able to come and give us a couple days here and there, and then the bigger roles uh, were from uh, from New York. Uh, I would say probably ninety percent of the main cast. Uh, were from New York, and then a couple were from LA. Okay, 
All right. Now, now you mentioned before uh, that overall, this is very, very much, you know, an underdog story. So uh, what do you think it is about, you know, films like that? Because we've had it throughout, you know, uh, movie history, films like that, whether it's Rocky or Rudy or, you know, things along those lines. What is it do you feel it is about, you know, human nature that we gravitate so much, you know, to uh, those types of stories? I think everyone's an, an underdog, no matter what uh, profession they're in, unless you're given where, what you have. Uh, usually, uh, we're not fortunate enough to have uh, that opportunity where someone gives you exactly what you want. So I want to say everyone is pretty much an underdog. And when when Mike and I, just, when we knew that we were going to have to finance the film ourselves, uh, we wanted to write about something that we knew. And we knew about being an underdog we knew about making something out of nothing, uh, and we knew about you. You bring up two move, two of my favorite movies, Rocky and Rudy, and we actually use those as, as terms. Like uh, when I'm talking to Mike, where I say, "Look, we can we can Rocky this, we can Rudy this," uh, because those are movies that inspire you, and we want people to watch the movie, whether um, you know you're in your teenage years or even a little bit older, to watch the movie and say, look, if this guy can do it, I can do it. And those type of movies stick with me. Um, I think that they stick with a lot of people and it makes you feel good inside because when you watch a piece of art, you want that to inspire you. And sometimes people go a different route. Uh, they want you to feel depressed or they want you to uh, be mad about a, an issue or something like that. We took the approach where when you leave the movie theater, you say, man, if this, if this kid can do it, I can do it. And that was very important to us. And I, I wanted to congratulate you on that because, I, I mean, just with the subject matter alone, um, it's very easy for anyone who's looking at it at first glance to just think that, just like you said, it's a, you know, a film that's trying to touch on a, you know, a, a issue and it, it can very well, you know, be very depressing. But I mean, despite the subject matter, I feel that it's, that it's quite uplifting and, and, uh, um, inspiring. So, you know, Pat, Pat's on the back to you, you know, with that, because like I said, on first glance, it, it doesn't appear that way, or even, you know, with the, the plot initially, um, uh, other than that, with, with, with DC, uh, independent film festival, you know, you had the DC premiere, uh, here, uh, what's what's up uh, uh, next for you in terms of like the festival circuit, or are you uh, you know concluding concluding you know the release or the the showing of this film with uh, DC? Is that you know your victory lap, so to speak? Well, uh, DC, I, I couldn't thank them uh, uh, enough because it was in our hometown. Uh, I was able to have family and friends, and we flew in all uh, the cast and crew. It was an amazing uh, experience. But we are looking to uh, move forward with the festival circuit. Uh, next up will be at uh, Garden State, which is next month. And then the month following will be at uh, World Fest Houston. So those are uh, uh, bigger venues, and, and we're not going to have our friends and family. We're going to see uh, what the audience really thinks of the film, so that, that should be interesting. And we'll ride that wave for probably until the summer. And by that time, hopefully we'll have some kind of distribution plan in place and we'll execute it from there. But yeah, we're just going to ride the wave, try to garner as much attention, possibly some awards, and just move forward and kind of showcase everything that we said in this interview. Us as filmmakers, uh, as a, a production studio, uh, Maryland, D.C., Virginia, all those things, because uh, the next step is to make more movies. And I want to talk to you again. I want to talk to you not only about One Penny, but... I want to talk to you about other uh, projects and, and, and other things that I'm going to be doing. So that's, that's the motivation there. Cool. Awesome. Well, David, uh, thank you so much for your time. And, uh, you know, I, I look forward to seeing, you know, what, what you have in store next.